For an object to be considered currency, it must serve four critical functions. It must act as a store of value, it must have a measure or unit of account to determine prices, it must be used as a medium of exchange, and it should also be usable as a means of debt repayment. When an object serves these functions, it holds perceived value and effectively becomes currency. This is my top 10 list of what I think are the strangest currencies in history, so let's get into it. Number 10. Animal Pelts Definitely the least strange on the list in my opinion. Animal skins have been a popular trading commodity for hundreds if not thousands of years. In Russia and Finland, squirrel pelts were an important medium of exchange during medieval times. Even the Finnish word raha, which now refers to money, originally meant squirrel fur. In North America, European settlers and native tribes found animal skins to be one commodity they both agreed had value. In 1748, beaver pelts were the standard of trade in the North. Just one pelt could get you two pounds of sugar. And of course, the use of buck as a slang word for a dollar we still use today came from the trade of buckskins. Number 9. Salt. Hopefully you paid attention in history class, as I myself probably studied the salt trade at least once a year since the fifth grade. The first written record of salt appeared in China as far back as 2700 BC. Salt was extremely useful for food preservation, but was also hard to procure, causing it to become used as currency. The Roman Empire at one point paid their soldiers in salt, what was known as salarium argentum, from which the word salary is derived. This is also where the phrase, not worth his salt, comes from, for when a soldier's salary was cut. There were even salt coins fashioned from slabs of rock salt in modern-day Ethiopia, the average of which was 10 inches long and 2 inches thick. From about as early as the 6th century in sub-Saharan Africa, salt's value per ounce was equal to that of gold, according to Moorish merchants. The famous Mansa Musa, ninth ruler of the Mali Empire, nearly crippled the value of gold causing it to drop by 10 to 25 percent when during his pilgrimage to Mecca, he freely gave entire gold ingots to beggars, tipped workers in fistfuls of gold dust, and overpaid every purchase, all of which was largely made possible for mining salt deposits back home where they were worth their weight in gold. Number 8. Obsidian as far back as 12,500 BC, obsidian was an important material for tools and weapons in what was then still the Stone Age, and it naturally became a medium of exchange, particularly in the Middle East. Anatolian obsidian is actually considered by most to be the first form of money in human civilization. Number 7. Cacao Cacao seeds were a popular currency in Mesoamerica for both the Aztec and Mayan cultures not to be confused with cocoa. The Aztecs believed that cacao seeds were a gift from the wisdom god Quetzalcoatl and contained magical properties. The seeds' earliest cultivation dates back to 1900 BC, but they were not used as currency until much later. Mesoamericans likely first grew cacao trees to produce an alcoholic beverage from fermented cacao pulp which was considered a luxurious treat and used by elites across the region and for special occasions like weddings. The usefulness of cacao seeds likely contributed to their rise as a means of exchange. When the Spanish first made contact in the early 1500s, the people of Mesoamerica commonly used cacao to buy items in marketplaces, pay for labor, and gamble. In the 1570s, Garcia de Palacio, a Spanish official, shed light on how cacao could be converted into Spanish currency. According to him, 200 cacao beans were equal in value to one Spanish real, which contained around 26 grams of silver. In modern dollars, that means 200 cacao seeds were worth about 16 bucks. Number 6. Onions. Onions are an inexpensive source of hydrating nourishment and were consequently used to sustain the droves of slave workers during the construction of some of the pyramids in ancient Egypt they were paid their wages in onions. In medieval times, Siberia used monetary onions up until the mid-18th century. And today, onion prices in the Philippines have skyrocketed. And there are even stores in Manila accepting onions in exchange for goods. Even beef brisket is 30% cheaper than onions by weight. Crazy.
If you're still watching up to this point, I appreciate your interest. And don't forget to like the video and subscribe for more content like this. On to the next one. Number five, Parmesan cheese. In case you were unaware, Parmesan cheese is freaking expensive and yummy. As early as 1200, wheels of Parmesan cheese were a medium of exchange in parts of Italy. Each wheel held the equivalent of about 550 liters of milk. Even as recent as 2009, certain banks were reported to be using Parmesan wheels as collateral for farmers' loans. Number four, tea bricks. Bricks of tea were used as currency throughout Asia, but in Mongolia and Siberia were actually preferred over metallic coins by nomadic tribes. They were made with tea leaves, either whole or ground, which were dried and compressed into bricks using flour, manure, or blood. The bricks could be used as a means of exchange, or they could be eaten when used to make tea, or even brewed for medicinal purposes. In Mongolia, 12 to 15 bricks would buy you a sheep, and tea bricks were still an edible currency in Siberia until around World War II. Number 3. Knives. Yes, the first standardized currency was born in ancient China in the form of miniature knives. Making currency from weapons was more common than you think, such as arrowheads in many cultures. So knife money is not as far-fetched as one would suppose. Around 600 BC, during the Zhao Dynasty in ancient China, monetary knives were used as currency, commonly inscribed with words or phrases to determine their value, such as fish or sheep. Imagine if modern currencies did that instead. I'd gladly craft a knife inscribed with PS5 and use that at my local Walmart if they let me. Regardless, these money knives were used for hundreds of years until the emperor declared that only coined currency was acceptable in China. My reasoning for placing this at top 3 was due to how volatile it seems, both how deadly knives are as weapons, and how their value was determined, like, this knife is worth one house because it says so. Number 2. Rye Stones Rye stones originated in the Solomon Islands. They were limestone discs with holes at their center, measuring up to 12 feet in diameter, and weighing in at 8 tons. Producing these stones was a dangerous feat, and the mortality rate only served to increase their value. The stones themselves were used in a variety of social transactions including marriage, inheritance, political alliances, ransom, and rarely in exchange for large quantities of food. Many were found in front of meeting houses, village courts, and along major pathways. Although ownership of a stone would change, they were rarely transported due to weight and risk. Thus, ownership was established by verbal agreement or by physical access. What really made these stones special was their perceived value despite essentially being just a big rock with a hole in it. The specific value was determined by its size, level of craftsmanship, or even who died during its initial transportation. Lastly, we come to number one. Are you ready? Eels. Using fish for money doesn't seem too far-fetched, but eels? Slick, slimy, wriggling little fellas? But during Lenten season in medieval England, they were highly sought after by monks as it was believed, perhaps due to their somewhat phallic shape, that they suppress sexual desire. Now the eels used for payment were not live or even freshly caught, but it was dried or smoked eels that were used for transactions. Eels were counted in units of sticks, made up of up to 25 eels, and 10 sticks of eels were known as a bind. Thus, a peasant could pay their rent, or perhaps purchase goods from a monastery, with sticks of eels. The first recorded payment with eels was in 700 AD, and by the time of the Day survey conducted in 1086, after William the Conqueror's successful campaign, there was evidence of more than half a million eels paid in rent in England every year. Naturally, centuries of eel hunting have unfortunately left the European eel a critically endangered species, and perhaps our close relationship to the animal must begin anew in order for them to escape extinction. Well, that's my list. Let me know if yours was different in the comments, or if you have any cool facts you want to share, do so as well. Like the video if you liked it, and subscribe for more futile facts. We'll see you all next time.